I guarantee you this is the only Tortuga travel backpack review you'll ever need to watch. And if this is not the bag for you, I'll make some alternative suggestions at the end of this review for some travel bags that might better suit your needs. Also, a special shout out to Safety Wing for sponsoring this video. More on them in a sec. Let's start off by talking about the gist of the Tortuga travel backpack. Tortuga is a brand that we have a lot of experience with, but then they kind of throw us a curveball where they sort of took out their old backpacks, namely the Set Out and the Outbreaker, and they're updating it with new versions of these bags. And just like the Outbreaker, the Tortuga Travel Backpack is a beefy, durable, heavy, but ultra comfortable backpack that I think is ideal for longer term travel, especially longer term travel for like digital nomads, remote workers, people who have a lot of tech gear and heavy tech gear. The comfort of this bag is crazy. I'll talk a lot about that in the back section of this review. Tortuga is really known, in my opinion, for their durability and for their comfort. Not as much for their sexiness, nothing against the sexiness of this pack. I just think that, you know, you're really getting comfort, durability. That's like the two sort of unique selling points with Tortuga and these materials are fantastic. Tons of organization, but also a decent sense of minimalism as well. Couple water bottle holders, a really well padded tech compartment. I mean, there's a reason Tortuga was one of my favorite travel backpack makers and will this still be one of my favorite travel backpacks? We'll figure that out at the end. This bag comes in two size options, the 30 liter or this guy, the 40 liter. The 30 liter weighs four pounds and the 40 liter weighs a pretty hefty 4.5 pounds. They only come in one color option, black. This is the Tortuga Travel Backpack 40 liter when it's empty and this is when it's full. And I'm gonna fill this whole thing out throughout this entire review so you can see exactly what it fits. And this is the bag on me. For reference, I am five foot eight. Tortuga offers a warranty against uh, defects in materials and craftsmanship for as long as you own the bag. And for all that, the 30 liter runs around 325 USD and the 40 liter runs around 350 USD. And if at any point in time, you're like, holy moly, take me to Tortuga, I'm going. And you're gonna make a purchase. We do ask that you do so using the first link in the description below. Reason being, that link makes sure that you get the best price and it also helps to support the Nomads Nation YouTube channel. Thank you very much. Okay, we're gonna kick this off by talking about the front of the Tortuga Travel Backpack. And for a bag with a lot of features, the front is fairly minimalist. First off, let's talk about this material. This material is awesome and highly durable. It's sort of like an x packy type material, which is the material that sailboats use for their sailcloths, so very weather resistant. But this fabric is called shell, so it's like x pack which is a three-layer laminated material. Tortuga logo, matte black, nice and subtle. Thank you for that. Let's talk about quick access though, because the Tortuga Travel Backpack gives you a quick access pocket right here. There's no additional organization in this pocket. It's literally just a big old pocket, as big as the circumference of the bag almost. We've got a ripstop nylon on the interior for extra durability. But because of its lack of organization, I think it's a good spot for like a bulkier or flatter bits of gear. So it might be a good spot for something like a bulky passport wallet, maybe a book or a Kindle. Those are just kind of chill in there. And then anytime you want something that's in that pocket, you just swing the bag around, unzip, and et voila, it's reading time. That was pretty fast. But you know what else is fast? Okay, they said it would take 60 seconds to respond, so I'm gonna send hello and start the timer. And you might be thinking to yourself, Aaron, what's going on? Who said this? Let me tell you about Safety Wing, a company that is modernizing insurance for digital nomads and remote workers as they travel the world. Now, one thing I like about Safety Wing is how their actual service works. It's less like archaic travel insurance. You know, think about like filling out all those forms and telling them all the countries you are going to and what time you're gonna be landing. It's not like that. It works more like a Netflix subscription. You just get your coverage, you travel basically anywhere in the world that you want and you'll be covered. And then whenever you're done, you just head back home and hello, Ellie, what are we up there? Stop. 40 seconds, pretty impressive. So you got the ease of use with the customer serve, I'm sorry, the ease of use of the actual service, and then the customer representatives getting back to you in 40 seconds, it's kind of unheard of for a travel insurance company. So it's a really awesome one-two punch. And let's be honest, guys, travel insurance, it's not the sexiest topic in the world, but it doesn't matter where you're traveling, especially if you're a remote worker or a digital nomad, you gotta be covered. I always am. I've been really impressed with Safety Wing. And if you wanna learn more about them, you can in the description with the second link. 
Now, I'm gonna tell Ellie she's about to be featured on a Nomads Nation video. It's her big break, but uh, back to the review. And then one other pocket on the front of the bag, we have this top pocket right here, which has this creamy colored ripstop nylon. I'm a huge fan of this color because it helps, well, first of all, just looks really nice, right? It's like creamy and sexy, cool. But also this color helps to create a highlight effect, which makes it easier to find the gear in your bag. And we also have a key ring here. Pretty basic, cheap nylon key ring, plastic holder. I don't know if I like my keys being here because this is like where I want to put my sunglasses, I feel like, and keys and sunglasses don't go very well together. So because of that, if you're gonna put your glasses in there, I'd recommend keeping them in their own independent case. And you can just go ahead and put that there and then boom, keys, glasses, good to go. Now let's talk about the middle of the Tortuga travel backpack. This bag's got two water bottle holders, which you hydration junkies watching this are absolutely gonna love. They're pretty big too. I got a 22 ounce Columbia water bottle here. You can see it fits in the side. Piece of cake with a decent amount of room to spare. But in case you're like me and you don't travel with two water bottles and you wanna utilize that space, good spot for maybe a backup umbrella. Now let's get into my second favorite part of this bag, which is the front admin compartment. But real fast, actually all these zippers are YKK PU coated zips. That's great for extra weather resistance. And the two zippers on this compartment are lockable, right? So you can actually put a little lock in there to keep your front admin compartment extra safe. And then welcome to organization. And for someone like me, I'm a big fan of organization, especially in a front admin pocket like this. But I think this pocket has some pros and some cons. Uh, let me kind of tell you about them. So first up, working from the bottom down, you got a big old pit down here. So you can put all your smaller tidbits of gear up here. But if you want a nice uh, accessible location for your big bulky Sony headphones, that's exactly where they're gonna go. Moving north from there, we have a zip pocket. This is a good ideal location, methinks, for wires and chargers. And what I like about this compartment is like, okay, normally I might travel with this Bellroy desk caddy, right? Cause I have like all my tech stuff in one location. But this bag says, you don't need the desk caddy, Aaron. All these little things that you would have put in here can all go in here. So I'm gonna throw my wires in here. I got just a backup pair of headphones, charging cable, right? Cause wires can be like anarchists. They're all over the place. Keep them in their place. This mesh pocket I think is a good location for something more fragile. You can maybe put your glasses in there if you're feeling a little risky. I probably wouldn't do that though. And I'm gonna put my, uh, my magic mouse in there, right? This nice elastic mesh. Oh, I love that, that's great mesh. I just love this whole creaminess of this compartment. I love the organization. I got two pen holders, right? I'm like, I only got one pen right now. I'm gonna throw a couple batteries in the back. But let me tell you what I'm not a huge fan of with this compartment is the one, two, three, four card slots in the upper right hand corner. For me, it's like I usually keep my cards in my wallet or my passport wallet. And I even tested this out on my most recent travels. I brought this back and forth from Hong Kong to the US. And I was putting like some IDs and cards in there trying to do the Tortuga way. And I can say for sure, it's definitely not my way. It's very prescriptive and it just is not in line with my travel style. So I kind of wish that was cut out, different pocket was put there. There's definitely other things that I could use there. So not my favorite part of this compartment. And one thing to know about this top pocket too, it runs to about yay deep. Um, and it's got a really nice microfiber material. Yeah, because of that, maybe I'll put the Kindle from the front pocket into here. That kind of works a little bit better. Throw the batteries with the wires. Now we're talking. Before we get into the main compartment, we do have three handles. One, oh wait, sorry, two handles. One on one side right here and one on the top. These handles have a nice little cushiness to them. Nice foam padding. And then I'm not crazy about the nylon on the top. It kind of takes away from the comfort a little bit. It's not a huge deal, but when you're paying 350 bucks for a backpack, you like these little attention to detail to just make using the bag a little bit more of a uh, experience, right? And this handle, it gets the job done, but you know, something to be aware of. And now let's talk about what everybody came here for. The main show for a big ass travel backpack is a big ass main compartment. And unlike the front admin pocket, which is very technical and has a lot of organization, this is pretty minimal. We got the big old canyon right here with nothing. No side zips, no other organization in there. And then you just got this elastic compartment, I'm sorry, mesh compartment uh, at the top right here, which is also pretty basic, which I, Freaking love. Speaking of which, let's pack it out. All right, I got a bunch of stuff. I've got a extra tech kit. 
I got a um, wash pouch from Gravel, been testing this guy out, and a couple of packing cubes. Let's talk about these packing cubes first. These are packing cubes from Tortuga. They fit perfectly and seamlessly with the Outbreaker, not in a way that's like super modular and like you need to have this ecosystem because they work flawlessly together, but they just kind of fit the overall aesthetic, the overall design language. And these are probably the most durable packing cubes I've ever seen on the market just because they're using the same materials on the exterior of this basically here as well. And they better freaking be for the price tag because these are 80 USD for the three pack, I believe. We're gonna be doing a video on the best packing cubes soon. This will be a part of it. So I'll go into more detail about these packing cubes then and maybe even do a full review, we'll see. But packing cubes are tight because you can go ahead and just pop these in, right? So, un, deux, trois. And you can see this trifecta of packing cubes, it does kind of perfectly fit the Tortuga main compartment, which is kind of awesome. But the good news is like this bag is huge, right? It's 40 liters, but it feels like it's like 43, 44, 45. So we can actually add more on top. So I'm gonna, I think, let's hope. I'm gonna throw a tech case on top. I got my DOP kit on top. I'm gonna throw pills going here. Backup puffy jacket, keeping it out of the packing cube in case I want quicker access to it. And then, a compressible day pack from air. Notice on the other side, it's good for professionals if you wanna keep like things maybe that you want to iron, right? Like suits and business stuff can go there or it's just another way to organize some extra clothes. Jackets can go there. You can put socks and undies if you want, but I don't really utilize that to be honest. So it's not for my personal travel style. What is just my personal travel style is just kind of throwing everything in and seeing if it fits. And this is gonna be a tough one, but I think we'll be able to get it closed. Oh, for show. Sure. Close that for show. And you can see that even though this thing is literally about to explode with stuff, it absolutely closes. Wow! But you're probably thinking to yourself, oh my God, Aaron, all that stuff, it's heavy. And I haven't even put the tech stuff in there yet. You must be like, it must do so much damage to your back. We'll talk about that. In fact, let's transition. Let's talk about the back of the Tortuga travel backpack. First up, let's talk about the tech compartment. I haven't been too critical of this bag, but I will be critical about this as well. So in the Outbreaker, you had a tech compartment that would zip all the way down on both sides, and then it would open, complete clamshell style opening, which I loved. This version though of the Tortuga travel backpack does not. It's just a little quarter opening from here to here, and then you just got this guy right there. Now, it's fine, it works, but... It doesn't work as well as it did when it was full clamshell style opening. And the reason is when I'm packing this bag, I'm packing the living out of it, right? Like, and now as you can see, I have packed the living out of it. And now it's time to get my tech stuff in there. And I'm not sure how much I can fit because it's so tight at this point. Now, I guess you could obviously load the tech stuff in first, but still, you know, I'm just trying to show you the overall functionality of the bag, but it still works. Don't get me wrong. In this tech compartment, we have a zipped mesh compartment at the top. Good for organizing your charger. And then we've got one, two laptop sleeves, but you can see the tightness here right now, right? It's hard to actually even see what's happening. So you can see this attaches via Velcro. Should be noted, both the 40 liter version and the 30 liter can fit up to a 16 inch laptop. So my 13 inch MacBook Pro fits with room to spare, but you know, you gotta kind of get it in there when the bag's packed out. Gotta kind of, a little wedgie slide action. And now, yeah, I mean, I'm gonna have to really take everything out of the main compartment to be able to pack it open, pack it up with this other stuff, to be honest. Screw it, let's do it. I gotta show you guys, I can't just say it. So you can see I've given it some room to breathe. iPad and keyboard, see, no problem. It all fits, you just, you know, you can't close it and overpack it. And I'm gonna try and get a little cheeky. Can I fit my Nexus, next stand, excuse me? I think I can. Nice, absolutely. I'm gonna put my notebook in there, but I'll put that actually in the front because your boy needs his notebook. Need my moleskin with me at all times. Will it all fit? Now this is the real test, right? This is the real clothes test. If we can get, oh my God. It's ambitious to say the least, but I really want to show you what this backpack is capable of. Oh yeah. With the tech compartment closed, you bet your booty. Will. I'm really pushing this bag to its limits. It should be noted, right? It might not be smart to pack it this much. Like I said, I just wanna give you the full picture of what it's capable of. So if you're doing less stuff, right? You're not gonna have as many complications with the tech compartment, fitting things in, closing the zips. I just wanna really push it. 
And now we have a 500 pound backpack, which normally would absolutely decimate my back. But now let's talk about my favorite thing about the Tortuga travel backpack. And that is the comfort. Because this is, without a doubt, the single most comfortable backpack, travel backpack that I've ever experienced. The comfort here is defined by six points. We got the shoulder strap, ventilated back panel, load lifters, adjustable frame, hip belt, and sternum strap. And that's the thing, like Tortuga pulled out all the stops with this guy. Let's quickly talk about the padding that's used and the mesh. Um, it's ventilated, it breathes really well, and it's just so thick, it's so chunky. And then obviously the ventilation works even better because you got this cut right down the middle of the back panel, which you know helps to provide refreshing airflow to your back, which does help with comfort. So the comfort of this padding and what's happening on the back panel are so important, but really it's the other elements that pull it all together, namely, being able to adjust this based on your height, right? Then once that's set, you pop the bag on. Oof, that's a big boy. And we got sort of the trifecta. You got the load lifters at the top. You go ahead and pull those effers nice and tight. Boom, redistributes weight from your back to your torso a bit more. You go ahead and pop on the sternum strap also. Nice and tight, yet again, we're redistributing weight. Less on the back, more to the torso. And then finally, that special sauce is these hip belts. Yet again, you don't want them loose, you wanna get them nice and tight. And then if voila, we have a backpack carrying experience that went from like, I was dreading wearing this to I can't believe how light it actually feels. Don't get me wrong, it's still like a heavy freaking huge backpack, but it's significantly better than I ever could have dreamed with everything that's happening here. Let's sort of break these things down one by one super fast. The load lifters are simple. You just pop them into place, right? You tighten them. And then if you want to loosen them, you can just do one of those, but really you're going to want to keep it nice and tight. And then you're going to have some excess dangle here, but we have these web holders at the top, which helps to keep them in their place. Hashtag stop the dangle. Hashtag thank you Tortuga. The sternum strap has some elasticity, so it sort of adjusts and adapts based on how you're wearing it and like the angle you're at. Basic hardware, who are you from? Wujin, not basic, great hardware. Good clip, and then you're gonna have some excess dangle here as well, but you can sort of loop it around. You, you do have a dangle stopper, hashtag stop the dangle for a more seamless and dangle-free travel experience. And the sternum strap is also adjustable depending on your height and where you like your sternum strap to be placed. One thing to note though, the sternum strap is not removable. But finally, let's talk about these waist pads because um, I love them. I hate them because it looks like that dorky dad who's like, hey guys, we're at Disney. Don't forget to put your sunscreen on, you know? Like, I'm not like looking fresh as f with these waist pads, but oh my God, are they so functional. And obviously they help with the comfort, right? So we got the buckle right here. Um, yet again, Woojin, so super durable. Some dangle stoppers here. You can go ahead and push the excess dangle, the excess nylon into right here, which is a really nice touch from Tortuga. Make sure that you have a nice clean, dangle-free travel experience. And the hip pads themselves are very well padded, obviously, as you would assume. Basically, the padding is very consistent in terms of the materials and the actual thickness of it. So shoulder straps, back panel, and the padding right here. In fact, this could be the thickest one. Yeah, but overall, comfort, it's one of those things, man, it's hard because you don't want to add too much weight, but you also want to make it comfortable with all this padding, and it's tough. And the reason I know this is tough is because I don't know if you know, but I don't only review backpacks, I'm actually building my own backpack as well. And not only am I building it, I'm actually building it in public. I'm documenting the entire experience here on the Nomads Nation YouTube channel. So if you love backpacks and travel gear, and you like the idea of getting a behind the scenes look at me building this bag, and you wanna help vote in some of the key features, I'm talking, you know, pocket locations, materials, colors, comfort, then check out the third link in the description below. That link will tell you where we're at in the project and it'll give you the option to sign up and complete a survey right away so I know your backpack preferences so you can just get voting and be a part of one of the first community developed backpacks on the planet. So take a look at the third link in the description and hopefully I'll see you in your inbox. Back to this guy. While I did put my passport wallet in here, I wouldn't recommend it. Maybe keep the wallet itself if you got one of these big bulky ones, right? But for me, take the passport, a little extra cash, maybe a Metro card, right? Anything you want quick access to. Because the joy of these super lame looking pockets completely negate the super lame lookingness of them all. Because having my passport, boarding pass, cash, and Metro card on hand right here when I used this backpack on my last travels was the coolest thing ever.
because you're in line, you know, like you're at the airport, you're taking trains, wherever it is, and you just need like two or three things, right? It was usually for me, it was AirPods, napkin, gum, passport, wallet, and then I was in New York, so I had the Metro card. And then it was like sort of document stuff and sort of like fun stuff. I really, really loved these pockets. But in the situation that you're like, Heron, those are so lame, I don't want them. They are removable with this Velcro right here, and you can, in fact, take them off. Let's talk overall pros and cons of the Tortuga Travel Backpack. Overall pro number one, next level comfort. Overall pro number two, really impressive durable materials. And pro number three is the creamy color and impressive durability of these internal materials. But I got some cons. Con number one, not the sexiest bag. Con number two, I'm never using these card holders. And con number three is the tightness of the tech compartment. It is not a deal breaker, but I did much prefer the clamshell style opening of the previous model. So if you've taken the pros and the cons into consideration, you're thinking to yourself, Aaron, you're right. That's the next level travel backpack. I'm getting one. Then remember, we do ask that you do so using the first link in the description. That link makes sure that you get the best price and it also helps to support the Nomads Nation YouTube channel, which we greatly appreciate. Thank you. But let's say you are not 100% convinced. Here's some alternatives. Alternative recommendation number one is going to be the Air Travel Pack 3. It's gonna bring a lot of the functionality and durability that Tortuga has, but it's a little bit smaller and has a bit of a different look. And to learn more about the Air Travel Pack 3, take a look in the description and you can find a link to our full review. Alternative recommendation number two is gonna be the Simple Travel Backpack. Yet again, a bit smaller, but at a more accessible price point. It's bringing a lot of the minimalism to the table that Tortuga is bringing, but does it in a little bit different of a way. To learn more about the Simple Travel Backpack, Take a look in the description below and you'll find a link to our full review. And alternative recommendation number three is going to be the Peak Design Travel Backpack. This is a functional, feature-heavy masterpiece that can compress and expand and do a whole bunch of stuff and it's great for photographers. And to learn more about the Peak Design Travel Backpack, you can navigate on down to the description and you'll find a link to our full review. Thanks again to Safety Wing for sponsoring this video. Remember, if you're a digital nomad um, or a remote worker, Insurance is like different for you. It's not just like, oh, I'm gonna go in World Nomads and get a policy. You, you live a different lifestyle. You're not hostling around. And the seamlessness of using Safety Wing, just getting one policy that covers the whole world, like a Netflix subscription, it rolls and rolls until you need it to stop. It's kind of a game changer for people like us who travel and work online. So to learn more about Safety Wing and their next level digital nomad insurance, take a look at the second link in the description below. My name is Aaron, this is Nomads Nation, and we'll catch you next time.